as we as we get into this program, let me take this time to welcome each and every one of you. I know you're some of you are joining from work, some are joining from home. We are in different time zones, but it's a privilege, a great honor it is to really get into such a prayer program together and to seek the face of the Lord and that he may bless us indeed. Now, as we get into this meeting, I want to share a word which I will ask that we we use for prayer. Uh, before I share it, let me welcome all of you who have joined in. Sister Phyllis, I hope you can hear me. Greetings and welcome. Uh, good evening, my elder. How are you? I'm well, thanks. And how are you? I'm well, thank you. Well, thank Wait. you. Just the cold, but we are fine. Wonderful. I hope the girls are good. Yes, they are fine. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you so much. Give them my regards and thank you so much for joining in. I think while I welcome others, just um, uh, open to Romans chapter 8. I'm going to ask you to read a few verses there as we get into our meditation. Any prayer request you might have, Sister Phyllis? Um, yes, I'm praying for a miracle, really. Um, I think I'm, I am I posted over the on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. I'm praying for my daughter. Um, the oldest, she, we applied for a visa a little bit late for study, and we are really praying for a miracle. And um, so far, we are excited because it has moved to the next phase, but we are praying that at least in the next week or two, yeah. um, initially to take up to f four months to mm -hmm. get a visa, but we really praying for okay. a miracle that in the next, because we submitted early June. So, mm -hmm. so far, yeah, we, right. God has been faithful since we started the whole process and we believe in trust he'll come through for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank we'll you. definitely be praying with Amen. you on that and uh, welcome. Uh, also want to take yeah. this time to welcome Elder Mangena. I see you've just popped in. Greetings and how are you, Mdal? I'm Kona Baba. How are you doing? And greetings to all that are already on. You are sounding very soft today. You are not this, you are not Umkwenyana here, so you must speak very loud. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I'm just coming in from another one. All right. I've been talking. Yeah, but I'm okay. I'm in, I'm here. All right. That's fine. I think you're trying to settle in there. We'll be with you in a moment. We're just getting into our opening prayer session and then. We're taking prayer requests right now. So perhaps you're not able okay. to share your prayer requests. Maybe let me take yours if you have, Elder. What are you praying for today? Oh, okay. Uh, my request is um, for God to keep along with me and tell me to his liking. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, and and remove the wild that is in me completely and let mm -hmm. him be known and be seen through me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, take this time to settle as you lead us in a word for tonight. We're continuing our theme from last week. So we look forward to oh, yes. a breaking yes. down of the word through the spirit, through your ministry tonight. So blessings to you. Thank you. Let me also welcome Sister Alette. I hope you can hear me. What's your prayer request for today? Okay, just be on standby. I could call on any of you right now because I want you to I want to take your prayer request. Perhaps if you're not able to just drop it in the chat, we'll be able to see it. I want us to get into a prayer session in a moment so be ready if i call on you i would like to really engage as many of you as we start this meeting uh, and i don't want to take too long perhaps what i could ask just so that we move th through this quickly with your cooperation if you have a prayer request why don't you raise your hand if you have a prayer request you want to share with us just raise your hand 
If you're not able to speak where you are because of your circumstances, just type it in the chat room. Let us see it in there because I would like to get into a prayer session knowing exactly what we are praying for. We must agree on these prayers and we must be persuaded of the same thinking. So if you have a prayer request you would like to share, raise your hand or just drop it in the chat room right now. If I don't see any hands, I will proceed to read the scripture I have for tonight so that we we get into prayer together. I'm just waiting to see if there are any who might raise their hands before I move to the reading of the word. Okay, I see one person, Sister Morley. I think I'll take your hand at this time. For those who are not able to share, please just type it in the chat. We are getting into our opening prayer session and I would really love us to pray from a point of agreement. Point of agreement is very important because Jesus said, if we agree on anything, touching anything here on earth, two people are needed to agree. God says, I will do it. And heaven will have to comply. So heaven is waiting on you and me to agree. Sister Molly, please unmute yourself and share with us your request. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'm praying for my country, Kenya. We've mm -hmm. had some a bit of unrest in the last couple of weeks. Yes. And then I'm praying for growth in my family that will grow in spirit, in our personal lives and in our professional lives. Thank you. Sister Molly, I'm actually praying that whatever is happening in Kenya must also happen in Zimbabwe. Oh. <laughs> because people in that country are suffering. You have no idea what's happening to my fellow Zimbabweans right now. People oh. get beaten and killed. No one ever speaks for the poor. People get swindled of their businesses, their monies. There's so much corruption. There are so many curtails. The whole state machinery is almost collapsed and has been mm -hmm. run almost like a spaza shop. Mm. The stories we hear are harrowing stories. And now there's a, there's a political storm between Zimbabwe and Zambia because of arms between Russia and the U.S. It's a terrible storm that's brewing. And mm. I... We just have to pray for our country. It might look like it's peaceful, but there's so much happening in the wrong way. So when we heard the Kenyan story and your young people, we felt, hmm, could this be a Kenyan spring that needs to happen in other African countries? So Yeah, yeah. You know, the Kenyans fight, you know, as they fight for our rights. Mm. Um, I'm just feeling sorry for their mothers who lost their sons. Their sons were ready to die. But mm. as a mother, you, you can never be ready to lose your kids. The kids had been their families by in the morning and they told them that you might not come back, but they're dying for a good cause. So mm. just pray for the mothers who've lost their their kids. Yes. It's, it's yes. not easy for them. Yeah. Thank you so much. Definitely we need to put, put Kenya and pray for those young people and pray for the families. Thank you so much and God bless. Sister Clarice, greetings and welcome. Kindly share your prayer request. Please unmute yourself if you can. Uh, good, e good evening, prayer friends. Good evening. Uh, we are just uh, requesting for uh, close the work with uh, God as a family. That mm -hmm. is our prayer request. Amen. Amen. Do you have an idea of what that closer work looks like for you? What are the specifics you really want God to look into? We need to understand um, him when he speaks to us because yes. uh, many a times we feel that maybe we are praying, but praying amiss. Mm. We need to hear him speak to us and uh, mm. see how he can guide us through our life's journey with him. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Sister Clarice. I would like to give you something that I'm hoping... If you and your family can study it, it will really spur you to another level. I have just finished studying 50 ways, 5-0, 50 ways in which the Holy Spirit 
leads us. Remember the prayer of Jesus was, it is expedient. I have to go so that the Spirit can come. So the ministry of the Holy Spirit is one thing that we grossly underestimate in this day and age. We are too much into moral lives, trying to tick the boxes of what we're doing right, which we fail anyway. But we have no idea what the Spirit of God can do with us and through us. So if you drop me a WhatsApp on that number on the screen, I will share those 50 points with you. They are, they are complete now. I have done an extra 30. If anyone, I think the other 30 I will do with the married couples because I've looked at 30 ways the Holy Spirit leads us in our marriages. So get in touch with me on WhatsApp and I'll share with you that document for your edification. And thank you so much for that request. I'm sure many of us do have that request that the Holy Spirit may lead us. Thank you so yes. much. Yes. Amen. Sister Alette. Yes. How are you? Very well, thanks. And how are you doing? I, I'm doing good, thank you, at work. But I would like that that also to share, that what to share with that sister. I would love to have that. I just want to yes. um, praise the Lord. And I just need prayers mm -hmm. for, uh, recently I was asked to, add, to head the um, music department at my church. Mm -hmm. And since then, the enemy and all his friends has come out in droves. Mm. So I'm, mm. I'm under attack in every which way when no, you know. Yeah. So I need prayers for God to lead and for for God's protection and for God to guide me yes. in leading the, the, the church and worship. Mm. Because but the enemy doesn't like it. So I've been yeah. I've been hit back and back. <laughs> so I need mm. prayers. Amen. Yes, Thank please. You so much. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much for that. I uh, really you. appreciate it. And I see a few prayer requests that have come through the the chat room. Thank you so much. Someone is praying for new beginnings and, and spiritual transformations and favor uh, from God. Um, someone says, I've been invited for a promotion interview. I need God's favor. Amen. Thank you. So that, uh, that's from Moteo. The other one is from Sister Emily. Uh, Sister Elmo Jean is praying for her family. Yes, lifting up the family, the first institution, the first church um, that God gave to mankind. Someone is praying for transformation, to be closer to God. Uh, there's a request here as well from Sister Ruth, who's at work and is not able to speak, but she says, I'm praying for restoration and transformation. That's the third request for transformation that people are asking for. Someone is asking for, Sister Rebecca says, pray for deliverance. I'm facing a lot of spiritual attacks. Yes, something is about to give in there. You know, people don't throw stones at trees without fruits. It's often those which are fruiting. It's those that have a mission that are often attacked. Fruitful ones. So that, that is confirmation, Sister Rebecca, perhaps that God is up to something in your life and the devil sees the ministry of angels, which is another subject we don't really focus on. There's an increase of angelic activity around you and the devil sees it and he comes along just as he did with Jesus Christ when he was baptized. Comes along and he attacks us so that the plan of God fails. So it is important for you to know how to respond and how to position yourself. And prayer is one such powerful tool that you must deploy as you wait on God and never give up standing up in faith. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Dare to make your purpose fair and let it be known. And uh, Sister Winnie says, I'm asking for prayers for healing. Healing messes for my boss uh, who was flown into a teaching hospital for further treatment. Definitely your boss, Dr. E.M., needs prayers for healing. Uh, Sister Wynne is asking for prayers for, for, for God to show her and her family mercy. Someone is praying for financial breakthrough. 
and also permanent employment. And uh, they are also lifting up the name of John Kutia before the Lord. Uh, Sister Tandiwe says, please pray for my family, for peace and unity. And Sister Tandi adds that God's evening, says, good evening, people. Um, pray for my son, who's on the road right now from Cape Town. She's asking for traveling messes. Thank you so much for those requests. And uh, I just want us to read, Sister Phyllis, if you are on Romans, Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. I just want to share a few nuggets with you there. And we pray together. Chapter 8, verse 39, verse 38. In fact, start from verse 37. Okay. 37 to 39. Amen. It says, Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors mm. through him who loved us. Amen. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life no angels, no principalities, no powers, no present things, no things to come, no height, no depth, no any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 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 May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of this word. I don't know what comes to your mind when you hear this, but many times I have heard preachers reiterate the phrase that we are more than conquerors. More than. We are not just conquerors, but we excel above and beyond. And I think the reason is because of what Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says. Because in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, you will hear Paul, you know, give acclaim and praise to God. And he says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, unto him, there is him. That is God who is able. That's why we are more than conquerors. Ephesians chapter 3 reiterates that he is able to do abundantly above. So we are more than conquerors because God is able to do exceedingly above what conquering is. And, 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 and Ephesians says, even the things we ask for, or the things we think about. God only needs you to think about it for him to act. So sometimes when you think about something, don't pray about it because even that thought that you have is from God. That's why Jesus was keen to ask people, why are you thinking in that way? That's why Jesus would say, think not that I've come to change. He was interested in our thoughts. Our thought patterns define what we become. We are more than conquerors. He can do exceedingly above all that we ask or we think because he works the operative of God is not your request. The operative of God is according to the power that is at work in us. So the question I have for you tonight is, what spirit are you of? What actuates you to ask the things you are asking? Jesus said to John, the son of thunder, when he had asked Jesus, to destroy the Samaritans for rejecting them. He says, cause fire to come down and burn them. James and John were so angry, they were almost asking for thunder. And Jesus simply said, you do not know what spirit or what manner of spirit is in you. What actuates you tonight? 
Because Ephesians, when he says we are more than conquerors, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Apparently, the spirit that you have can separate you from God. After all things have failed to separate you, the spirit that is, that is in you can separate you. That's what separated Cain from God because his spirit, which informed his behaviors, was a rebellious spirit. What spirit, what manner of spirit do you have tonight as we ask? Because he is exceedingly abundantly able to do above all that we ask or we think according to the power that works in us. We should give him glory because it is through Christ, it is through God that we are able to overcome. Tonight as we pray together, I want you to consider that your requests are given. They are granted. All the promises of God are yes in Christ Jesus. The reason why we don't receive is because our spirit is not actuated by the spirit of God. Because the Bible says your spirit is the candle of the Lord. Examine what manner of spirit you are today. Ask yourself, where are you in your relationship with God? Does God know you? Are your tears, tears for the glory of God, for the kingdom of God, or they are tears for your own selfish needs? What persuades you today? Because Paul has listed here things that often affect our spirits. Did you notice, Sister Phyllis, the things that he has listed here? And do we understand how these things affect mm -hmm. our spirits? Do you see what he has listed here on verse 38? Death. Death. Principalities. Mm. Mm. Light created things. Mm. Nothing can separate us. Yeah. So let me come to you and say, friends, tonight, if your spirit is at peace with God and with men, you see, that's why Jesus said, if you are going to worship and you think you've got something against somebody, stop right there. Get out of this prayer meeting and go and call the person you have a grudge with the person you are angry at, the person who walked out of you and left you angry. Perhaps it's you who walked out. If there is anyone that comes to your mind right now, I give you the right. It's a God-given divine opportunity. Jesus says, don't continue with your prayer. Go and fix things with your brother. Then come. Because when your spirit is right, not even death or life, not even the appearance of angels in your life, no principalities and powers, no things present or whatever is coming in the future, neither height, which means greatness, nor the depth, which means lowest points in life, not even any other creature can separate us from the love of God. Jesus says, if you love one another, then the world shall know that you are my disciples indeed. That's why we need to have our relationships right. Jesus talking to his disciples in the book of John, he says, behold, my friends, the devil cometh, but he has nothing in me. That's Jesus speaking. He says, Behold, the prince of this world cometh. He is coming after me, but he has nothing in me. That's deep. 
That's deep, that's depth of purity right there. Jesus says, I, I, my spirit is clean. That's John chapter 14, verse 30, that I'm summarizing. John chapter 14, verse 30. He says, I, I, I really need to go. I cannot keep talking to you anymore. I need the spirit to come. But I want you to know this. The devil who's coming after me, he has nothing he can use inside me. How are your thoughts? How are your habits? How pure are you keeping your spirit for the spirit of God to use you? Tonight, my friends, the devil wants to separate us from God. Not by these things. We can ride over death. We can ride over pain and loss and suffering and image even stronger. But when our spirits are corrupted, God cannot dwell in us. So as we pray together at this moment, I want us to consecrate our spirits. Submit those sins that easily beset us. The righteous man falls seven times. But the good news is that every time he falls, he gets up. So what hope is there for us? God wants to give us strength so that we don't fall every day, but we die every day. That's the greatest exchange. Some people cannot pass a day without sinning. But Paul says, I die every day. I don't sin every day, but I die every day. And so that's the prayer request I would like us to pray for at this moment. Before we get into our word, create in me, O oh God, a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, but deliver me. That's the prayer for tonight. Is that your prayer? Is that your request? Because God is interested in your purity rather than in, in you receiving blessings from him. The greatest gift from God is the Holy Spirit. Because when I have the Holy Spirit, I have everything I need. That's why Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness comes by imputation, which means when I declare and I confess Jesus in my life, he gives me his character. He imputes me from sin and gives me his righteousness. And as I walk with him daily, dying in sin daily, he, he, he sanctifies me and prepares me to be in the kingdom in heaven. Is that your prayer tonight? Raise your hand if that's your prayer. I would like to pray with you. And I would like a second person to pray for the message we will hear tonight. Raise your hand if that's your prayer tonight. In addition to your prayer requests, God is in, interested in pure vessels, clean vessels. No sin must rule in your body. You must rebuke it. You must cleanse yourself and allow the power of God, the refreshing presence of the Spirit of God to start working in you. If there's any sin that you have committed, whether private or public, confess it right now. Whatever it is, God is interested to begin with you afresh and to impart power. Doesn't matter what you've gone through. Tonight, God is just simply saying, I am willing. But if you don't allow me, all of these things I read in Romans chapter 8 will separate from you separate you from God. Haven't you seen people who lose a loved one and they'd start cursing God and asking, why me? Haven't you had people who have gone through terrible occurrences and they start cursing God? It's because their spirits were never given to God. Because when you truly know God, 
you will never depart from him. I was speaking to an elder, one of my senior mentors today. He lost his wife last year and he's really been in mourning. Um, and he was telling me, I feel very shaky. I want the Holy Spirit to guide me on how to move on. And I said, he already is. Because when I read your devotionals, there's something I am seeing that was not there before. You have become sharper and more polished and more concise. And your messages trigger a heart. And I say, that's the presence of the Holy Spirit. The rest, my brother, leave it to him. He knows what he's doing. Wait upon the Lord. The experiences you're going through are preparing you for the greater work God is about to give you. Is that your prayer tonight? You're saying, Holy Spirit, fill me. I don't know how to turn left or to turn right or to go forward. I fall a lot. I think the wrong things. I need you to cleanse my, my mind, my spirit, my heart. Raise your hand if that's your call. If that's a prayer point you want us to pray for, raise your hand. I don't want to take too long on this one, friends. We have a word to get into. And I want to give Elder Mangana enough time to teach us tonight. I'm waiting for you. I really am, because it baffles me that you don't want the Holy Spirit tonight. It really does baffle me. What else do you want from God besides the Holy Spirit? What else? That's the greatest of the gifts. Even did Jesus say, let me step aside to allow the Holy Spirit to come. Raise your hand if that's your request tonight. I'm waiting on you. May he reign in your heart today. Is your heart right with God? Have you sorted all your issues with God? I've often said on this platform, God does not hear sinners. And there's a Bible verse actually to that effect. So if you know you are struggling with something in your life and you know you need a new touch, remember that man in the book of Mark who was touched the first time on his eyes and he says, I see people as trees. He had never seen trees before. <laughs> he was blind. But he says, I see men like trees. And Jesus had to touch him the second time. I know some of you have been walking with the Lord for many years. It has become almost like your second nature. You can almost second guess what God is saying to you. You've read your Bibles many times. But friends, God is a friendly God, but he's not your friend. When he makes a call, he really means it. Because he knows you cannot make it. You will be separated from his love if your spirit is not right with him. Judas was not right with God. Peter was not right with God. Jesus had to pray for him. I want to pray with you today. And so I'm asking you to raise your hand. Thank you. Raise your hand. It is you I'm waiting on. May God bless those who raised their hands and fill you with his spirit. May he be seen in your life beginning right now. If he has not already been moving in your life, I pray that through your dreams, through your thoughts, through your plans, may you be given so much success and may the anointing of God be upon you. May whatever you ask be granted in the name of Jesus. If there's any disease in your body, 
in your loved ones when you pray for them. May God hear you and grant you the desires of your heart. May you be given the spirit of wisdom and of knowledge to know how to use the information you have to make a difference in this life. I pray that may those who are under the shadow of your influence be protected and blessed because you raised your hand today. I pray that the Spirit may take over your life and show you the wonders of God that you never knew. Because God's promise upon you, my friend, as you raise your hand, is that he will show you great and mighty things if you call on him. Thank you for honoring this call. I pray that God may remember you when he shall come with his kingdom. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your children that have honored the request you've given today that while death, principalities, and powers, and angels may not even separate us from your love, we have discovered that when our hearts are not right, when we harbor sin in our hearts, and we don't confess our weaknesses and our sins, we will not prosper and we will be separated from you. But tonight, Father, we are asking for spiritual cleansing of our hearts. We are praying, O oh Lord, that may our spirits be cleansed from all unrighteousness. The thoughts that are sinful, may you help us to transform and never to action them. Give us power to say no to the suggestions of Satan, to the conversations with the wicked one. Give these who have honored you by raising their hands your power. Hear me, O Lord, as I ask on their behalf and as they pray silently where they are. Give us this day your Holy Spirit. Pour him without measure upon all flesh and upon those who have raised their hands today. May cloves of the tongue of the Holy Spirit, the fire of heaven, be seen in their lives. Give their words life, that they may bless those who need to be blessed, that they may proclaim your name where it needs to be proclaimed. Some of them are here making requests, Lord, in the chat room. Some of them have mentioned their prayer requests here. They are asking for specific blessings from you. And Lord, how I pray that you may remember the country of Kenya today and visit those streets if there are any demonic forces that are intending to destroy and kill and steal the peace and unity of Kenya. May you disarm them tonight. And Father, I pray that those who are oppressed, may they be freed, not by the sword or by the barrel of the gun, but by your Spirit. Intervene, Lord, in the narrative of this great country and give it peace tonight. I pray that may the same Spirit transcend across Southern Africa, across the nation of Zimbabwe, across the nation of South Africa that's going through so much political transformation. You sit in those board meetings. You sit in those political caucus committees, Father, and rebuke the spirit of evil. There are men in, and women in this country who are filled by the spirit of revenge and hatred. Silence those altars in Jesus' name. I pray for the leaders who are appointed to lead that may they hear about your great name and grant that the gospel be preached and lifted up in their countries. I pray, Father, in a special way for my sister Alette on her requests that she has put up today and many other requests that have been mentioned in the chat room for healing, for breakthrough, for protection, for power over wicked satanic attacks. We are praying victory in Jesus' name. We are claiming victory in his name. Because he overcame and said, all power in heaven on earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go 
Father, may we go with his presence, with your presence in us through Jesus. Allow us to succeed. We are about to hear your word now. This is not a small matter because this word has life for us. When we hear it, this word can give us success in everything we attempt to do. Thank you for the blessing of life to be in our right minds, in our homes, listening to this word, Father. We thank you. We ask that you may be with those who are not so fortunate as we are, that we may also reach them through your spirit and in the airwaves. Father, how I pray that you may complete a work that I don't see how you're going to do it. We are so few of us, and even among the few of us, many are now corrupted by the prince of this world and are no longer standing in the place they should be. How are you going to finish your work and reach the ends of the world? Help us in our weaknesses that we may be strong through you. Bless this word. May it set us free. For I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Um, Elder Mangena, I would like to ask you to share with us our, our reading for today. And as we hear this word, friends, this is meant to be God speaking to your situation. And so listen attentively because the solution to your problem might be in this word. Mm -hmm. So may, you, may the Lord bless you. Over to you, Elder. Thank you, and uh, I want to welcome all of us that are here already. Uh, may God's Spirit indwell us. I think that is a very uh, important prayer. We need the Spirit of God to indwell. Do you know what a human can be without the Spirit of God? Nothing. Maybe we, maybe we don't know. Mm. Without the Spirit of God in us, reigning you, directing and dictating the pace in our lives, mm. we are worse than animals. That live Amen. In, the and in Amen. any case, animals which are okay because they don't have a choice. Mm. But the act they do, we can do worse when we have the power of choice. Mm. <laughs> Amen. So today we are just going to do Genesis 3. I would, I would like to ask Sister Phyllis to read verse 5 and 6 and 7. But we will spend time on verse 6 because we started it last the fall and we cannot leave it unchecked we need to check and turn the stones around the six and see what happened and then try to look at ourselves from that point of view um genesis chapter three i'll read from verse uh, five it says, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Mm. Verse six. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, 
and he ate. Verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Amen. Mm. Amen. Those are the three verses that we we will zero on. And uh, I'm so glad for the revelation that come out of these verses. You see, the whole game of salvation is played around there. Before I can say much, I want to ask you, Sister Phyllis, to read Genesis 1, read from verse 26. From verse 26? Yes. Okay. It says, uh, Then God said, Let us make men in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 27. Mm -hmm. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created mm. them. Mm. Verse 28. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Verse 29. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Verse 30. Okay. Also. Okay. okay. Uh, for you it shall be for food. food. Okay. I think we can we can we can hear that. Let's go back to verse five and six. I I I I just read these verses so that we know who we are dealing with. I mean their texture. Who are they? Where are they coming from? They were created in his own image after his likeness so that they can have dominion a question that is simple that can rise before they were created did the creatures have anyone presiding over them having dominion over them until god found that it was good for him to create someone in his own image and then created he, them, male and female so that they could have dominion, so that they could multiply, so that they could subdue the world, overcome it. This, this is what my... What we read, he say, then verse 5, what does he say? Verse 5, 3 verse 5, what, what is coming there? For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. But in Genesis 1, let us make men in our image. Already Adam and Eve are in the likeness of God. To me, it's saying they were created for love by love in love because God is love. They are 
living, presiding over all creatures in God's image. So when creatures are looking at them, they see God in Adam and Eve. They were given food, verse 29. And now the language here is saying, for God knows that in the day you, you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God knowing good and evil. When they are already like God and they are being told you will be like God. It tells me that this message is coming from the person that knows God and who probably knows that Adam and Eve already, they are like God. But he is saying, in the day you shall eat, you will be like God. Your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Then verse 6. Then what happened? I came up with she chose. She used the power of choice. Last week, we learned that just that conversation, that engaging in that conversation is in itself the worst evil. We agree on that. Is in itself the worst evil. I will not be long today. It will be very short, but I want us to think and internalize the thoughts that come from these three verses we read today. So when the woman saw, she saw. With which eyes did she see? What kind of eyes saw? Which she did not have before this day. So when the woman saw that the tree was good, for food. She saw that it was pleasant to the eyes. Can you, can you see that the person who finally uses the block that the, the, the blow that kills everything, it's evil. The serpent spoke if engaged, and her eyes began to see. She made a choice. I wrote in my research here today that after seeing, she saw that it was good for food. This statement telling us slowly that she is moving from her former state to a state she does not know. She saw, she was, she, her eyes saw that the, the tree was good for food. And it was, because it was pleasant to the eyes. Which eyes? And a tree desirable to make one wise. The desire to eat the forbidden fruit against the will of God grew in Eve. Afterwards, she took. of the fruit and the earth. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. So oh, Elder, mm. why is it that the Bible is particular about 
Eve's eyes seeing and evaluating that it's pleasant and deciding that it's desirable for to make one wise. And the Bible doesn't say that about Adam. Yet when you read from Romans chapter 5, verse 12, mm. it says, by one man's sin, sin entered into the world by one mm. man. Yes. And death by sin. Yet when Eve ate, that sin had not yet come. Mm. So why is it that the Bible is particular about Eve's eyes seeing and yet it does it says nothing about Adam's eyes seeing that Eve has done something wrong and doing the right thing? Mm. Yeah. Those questions must arise. I expected them. Mm. Eve saw after seeing the goodness began to crop into the space of yes see mm. it means your mind process and after processing she saw goodness and then the eyes told ye and the brains told ye or the mind told ye that the tree was desirable to make one wise now it may, maybe she went a little bit backward there mm. she did not evaluate herself she thought that she was not wise i don't know she 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 she, she sees the tree and she says if i eat this tree i will be wise but she, she was not wise maybe in conversing with the serpent she was seeing that she is not wise but in what the serpent was saying she was going to get wisdom. Could it be that mm. the eyes that are mentioned on verse 6 mm. are not just her physical eyes? Yes. Let's because that's because, I mean. because there's another eye that's opened on verse 7. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and that's we are coming to that one. <laughs> the yeah. eye on verse 7 so, it, it, it saw, sees something, but let's concentrate on this eye here. Yeah, so, so, that, so that when we begin to understand what verse 6 is saying, we will then realize that it is very possible to be borrowed eyes and ears yes. and a mind yes. by the devil. Yes. yes. He can borrow you his eyes so that you see like him mm -hmm. in defiance to what God could have you to see. Mm. Let's remember. Yeah. Let me put these things into account so that we know. If he had never spoken to the serpent before, she had spoken to God and Adam. She had had exchanges in talking between Adam and herself and God with them. That's my assumption. They had spoken. But for the serpent speaking before, she had not seen it. Because there is no creature that he had speech that was given speech. The Bible does not tell us that the, the, the creatures, other creatures, he had speech before that could be understood or, or exchanged by, with, with, with Adam and Eve. But she answered back. After answering back, she began to see that began to see things good for food. It's pleasant to the eyes. 
if this tree is desirable to make one white, did she not know what God had said? She knew. She had been told that we shall not eat of. And the serpent started from there where they had been told. Did God say? And she answered and said, yes, God say. Then the serpent said, God knows. So, the, in Eve, in Eve, she, it did not dawn that the argument of the serpent was prosecuting her creator. I don't know. I think we also fall into that space where we begin to doubt God in us, in our lives. And the evil men prosecuting our God, we agree with him until we are also abused in our bodies. So here, if the eyes of Eve saw good for food, pleasant to make one wise, she took, then she, from there, then she took, when she took the fruit, she was already changed. She was now against God. She was against the Lord. They, they had been told. She was against everything. She made a choice. She voluntarily went into this. She moved into this voluntarily. That's my assumption at the end of the day. She volunteered to eat what God said they must not. Let me look at another space. Was these three poisonous? No. To me, it's no. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it was not the only tree. Yeah. There was also the tree of life. Mm. The tree of life, there are no specifications that God had said, don't eat about, don't eat it. But God said, the tree of knowing good and evil, thou shalt not eat. For the day you shall eat thereof, you shall truly die or surely die. What tells me here, or what, what I get also here, she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Adam was not tempted by the serpent. He did not answer a word when the serpent was talking. But Adam ate from the hand of Eve. Adam ate out of love. That's my assumption. That my wife cannot die alone. But let me say this. Eve came from Adam. Yo. Yes, that's true. Eve came from Adam. You remember when Eve was created, a rib was taken from Adam. And that rib created Eve. God made Eve and brought him here to Adam. So even in Eve, there is Adam. That's my assumption. But when Adam physically ate from her hand. He was eating out of love of his wife, for he was not tempted, but he was succumbed to temptation, made a voluntary move to eat the forbidden fruit. What do you get? So, this is Elder, the point. On um, just coming back to that point you are explaining, um, Adam eating out of love. The Bible actually does confirm that it is Adam who sinned. Um, uh, if you read Romans chapter five, I think I shared that with you before. 
Yes, mm -hmm. even Corinthians. Even yes, Corinthians. First, first Corinthians um, 15, 15, verse, uh, I think it's 22. Yes. For it says, yes. For as in Adam all die, even yeah. so in Christ shall all be made alive. Mm. So sin got completed in Adam, um, which is again another mystery of the creation of males and females, which is actually an argument that feminism is trying to destroy. And I'm sure we'll cover it when God finally comes and addresses Adam and Eve. God makes it clear to say, Eve, because you listen to the voice of the other guy and not your husband. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> of the other guy. Yeah, the Imagine other the guy. <laughs> of the other guy. Yeah, because you <laughs> did his biddings and not the biddings of Adam. I am now going to make your desire to become that of your husband. I'm going to say something that can mm. mess up a lot of people here. That's why mm. women get so messed up psychologically when marriage doesn't go well or it doesn't happen in their lives. Because women love with the emotions and the heart. Infidelity hurts women more than it hurts men. Men think, and this is a psychology, most people who are messed up with feminism don't want to hear. But look at the dealings of God with Adam and Eve later on. The guy who sinned, God never touches his body. He says, I'm going to cast the ground for your sake. But the woman who listened to the other guy, her biology and anatomy gets shifted. Her, her psychobiology gets changed. She now is placed under. Mm. I know women don't want to hear this, but this is the theology of God. She is now placed. We'll see it later, I think, when we get to that section. For now, let's deal with the anatomy of sin. That scene requires two people to agree on mm. it. One, it's a suggestion from Satan. It needs a human being to confirm it. You see, Elder, let, oh. me, give you, let me give you this one, this, this theology I have for my understanding. What did God say to Adam about Eve? You will discover that God never talked to Adam about giving him Eve. Mm. In fact, he eliminated Adam in the equation of making Eve. Sister Phyllis, do you have an answer? <laughs> <laughs> this is deep. Yeah. Listen, she might not even have. Do you have an answer, Sister Phyllis? No, no, not now. God did not speak to Eve about Adam, neither did he speak to Adam about Eve. Let me mess you up a little bit right there. He said, mm. let us make man in our own image. The verse you read said, in his mind, he had male and female, but the creation of these two was exclusively mutually separated. He mm. never spoke to Adam about it. He never spoke to Eve about why she's created. The Bible simply says he eliminated Adam from the equation of the creation of Eve. So I don't want to hear any man who tells me that they are involved in making a woman. No. No. That's why even the Bible says he who finds a woman, you find her a woman already. Because it is God who makes women. Unfortunately, culture and our societies are, are, are destroying the image of the woman. But God makes the woman. Women are a project of God. Men are excluded in the making of a woman. Adam is not even there. Because if Adam was there, 
I don't think women will be what they are today, both physically, mentally, spiritually, biologically, and otherwise. So God eliminates Adam and makes Eve out of a part he took out of Adam. He is the mystery of God. When Adam was being created, he had already Eve in the DNA of Adam. Yeah. He takes a rib. Mm -hmm. Those who do medicine know what I'm talking about. A rib is the thinnest of all the bones in the body, but the most flexible, but also the one that's entrusted to protect the most vital organs of the body. Mm. You can't argue against True. that. Women are taken out of that bone. That is the precious, slim, thinnest, but the most powerful bone in the body and gets entrusted to protect the vitals. That bone which most medical yeah. procedures can shear off and it regenerates itself because its function is so important, a rib has to be firm. And by the way, when ribs are broken, you don't plaster them or patch them. They self-heal. Right. <laughs> yeah. You... God takes that bone, the bone that when you get involved in an accident, it can puncture your vitals and kill you. It is the bone that's near it that can send you to your grave when you get into an accident. Powerful. So God takes that bone elder and makes Eve. So we don't want to undermine the, the deception that happened to this super beautiful quality gem of a woman. The best from the hands of God. Because when God brought this woman to Adam... He never said anything. It is Adam actually who said, she is born of my bone. Because remember, when he was sent to sleep, Elder, he was busy naming animals. I'm sure he must have gone to sleep calling a lion and he said, this one is a lion. And then he went to sleep. <laughs> when he woke up... I, I do not remember. Yes, I do elder. not remember properly. But I... I... I don't know whether I read it in the spiritual prophets or it's been running in my mind. Mm. That he, he was looking for a help meet amongst the creatures that we created. He was hoping you will find one like him. Yes. Yes. And he did not find any. Yes. And then God put him to sleep. And yes. then when he, his first saw from sleep, and then he saw, he and then he said, bone of one. my body, flesh <laughs> of my flesh. And he gave the name. Yes. It is Adam who gave the name. And it is Adam who said, man shall leave his father and mother. It's not God who said those words. Read it carefully. Adam is the first marriage officer who said, I will leave my father and my mother. For him, it was leaving God. Okay. That's why when he ate the fruit, mm. he thought he has the freedom to do it because he has left his father. The way we men today make decisions away from our fathers and our mothers because we are now independent. But what he didn't know is that he's still the vice agent, mm. meaning he is accountable still to God. He cannot just do his own will and get away with it. And so the same super intelligent Eve got deceived and ate the fruit. The super intelligent Adam, if you want to know how intelligent Adam was, just look at his work, going about and naming animals. God never corrected him on any of them. We have no record of Adam being corrected by God, which means Adam was on the wavelength of God in terms of his image and his way of thinking and being such that God did not even oppose him. Neither did God oppose him when he named Eve, Eve. <laughs> he is, he had jurisdiction. This My man was super intelligent to the level where God said, whatever Adam says goes. And But unfortunately, 
when it came to the fruit, God had to have his way. He ate. When he My ate, elder. then God opposed him. Uh, yes, sir. I I I I want I want I want us to I wanted to say to add to what you are saying. Mm. I am looking at as a human being created in his image after his likeness. Mm. So I'm saying to myself, the faculties of it could withstand mm -hmm. the, 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 the narratives from the serpent. Mm. He might withstand that. Mm. When the serpent spoke, she knew that it's not Adam. Yes. It's not God. Mm -hmm. It's the serpent. Mm. And this verse 6 here, I'm looking at now, says Adam to Eve, I mean, sorry, Eve. Yeah. Eve began to see and began to make conclusions. Mm. Uh, it is good. The tree is good for food. She began to, to make that conclusion. In Genesis one day, God says, you shall eat the fruit and the herb of the field and the seed yielding. You sh that mm. shall be for food. But here she is saying that forbidden fruit is for food. Where, where, where is Adam in that equation? This is okay. where I'm saying, no. He chose. Yeah, you're breaking the elder. We want to hear you clearly on that one. The question I had asked was when the woman was seeing and she was finding the fruit pleasant and the fruit desirable, before she took, why did she not consult with Adam? I think I've lost my elder right there. Uh, I'm not sure if you're still here, Elder Mangena. Yes, I'm not seeing him there. But here is the point. I'm hoping he'll, he'll join in. We are looking at the anatomy and the processes of sin becoming a reality in the life of Adam and Eve. Do you see the pattern from heaven? When, say, when Lucifer deceived the angels... The mistake that the angels made was that they believed Lucifer and did not go back and check with God if what Lucifer is saying is correct. They were dazzled by his power and his position as the covering cherub, and they thought if he can be from the seat of God, be so talented above all of us, surely he is saying the truth. And that is exactly what is happening today. Many of us get into sin because we cut away the people that we should consult on certain decisions. Sin thrives yes. on secrecy. I'm not talking oh. about privacy. People need their privacy. Oh. But when you start doing things in the secret you know you are yes. dealing with a satanic spirit. The moment you don't want someone to touch your phone, to open your computer, to open your wardrobe, I'm not saying anyone. I'm saying your husband or your wife or your children. You must know you are already seeing like Eve was seeing on verse 6. Mm. Because sin has a way of cutting off ourselves from the people we must be accountable to. So it thrives in secrecy. The divide and rule strategy is a satanic strategy that makes sin looks attractive. To say, let me test this without my partner knowing. Let me test this without my parents knowing. That's how sin gains its power. Because we deal with our own personal, selfish, deceived view 
And in the end, we miss it. Elder Mangana, I hope you're back. Yes, I'm back here. Yes, we I missed your last out, point. Yeah, I was saying, uh, if, but my internet, my, my Wi-Fi is full and I don't know what's happening. I was saying, mm. she made a choice. Mm -hmm. Because their conclusion she makes yeah. against what she knows. Mm. Then she concludes, good for food. Mm. Was she hungry? <laughs> no. She's creating she a recipe full. for herself. She was full. Mm. <laughs> she was not hungry. She was full. She had eaten the real food. Mm. That it was pleasant to the eyes. Mm. The other view I'm seeing, let me let me say, mm. the scene has never been more physical. Mm -hmm. It has always been spiritual. Yes. The serpent speaking tells us today mm -hmm. that is the spirit of the evil one making a creature that is no speech to speak. Mm. It's spiritual. Mm. If you go to our country, there, there are people that use anything. A tortoise can talk to you. Mm. If you go to Zaka, there, anything can talk to you. A dog can talk to you. Mm. But when the dog is talking, it is a spiritual transaction. Mm. It is a spirit agent. It is a medium. Yes. Yes. It is a medium. So, and then she concludes in the in the eyes, in the eyes see it it is it, desirable to make one wise. But already she's created in his likeness, in his image, after his likeness. She mm. cannot be foolish. If you are in God, you can't be foolish because when you are in God, you have all wisdom. Even Proverbs says, knowing God is the beginning of all wisdom. Mm. So she was already in wisdom. So she she knew. She knew. She was, she knew, she made a choice. And I'm saying my elder today, like I've never said it before. Mm. You don't see it when you are not possessed. Yes. You've got to be possessed first. You've got to be possessed first. Yeah. Your taste buds must change. Your eyes must see things you have never seen. Mm. You must see things in a new format. And even your emotions must tell you that this ought to be done now. That's what yeah. happened to him. Mm. And that's what happens to us. I, I, I prayed with one girl. I prayed with one woman sometime. This woman phones me and say, I need your prayers. I need you to pray with me. Not one, not only one, many. I, I, I think it's four or five or six or seven. Says, I, I need to pray with you. I say, what is your reason? She says to me, uh, there is a voice that speaks to me. And that voice instructs me specifically to sleep with a man. And if that voice speaks, I know mm. that within a day or two or three, not more than three, I must sleep with someone. Mm. And then she says to me, if you want to pray with me, you also must be strong. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> it's not a laughing matter, but I'm laughing. You also must be strong. Mm. Otherwise, <laughs> I will conquer you too. <laughs> so, listen here. Sin goes beyond our structures physically. Mm. You begin to be told that you are more beautiful, you have got a good structure, you are better than others, 
And when pride has crept in, you begin to see what is not food being food. Hmm. Then you will eat the tail of a crocodile hmm. in the name of man. Hmm. But is someone eating the tail of a crocodile? It's an example. Hungry. No. He's not hungry. There could be plenty of food. Maybe he has repeatedly eaten the same things. He wants to explore new stuff. Mm -hmm. You're not hearing. Mm. <laughs> You're not hearing. She has been eating beef a long time. She has eaten beef. She has eaten um, guinea fowl. She has eaten chicken. She has eaten broilers. She has eaten sheep. Eaten goat. She has eaten the wild. She has mm. it, but now I need the crocodile's tail. Mm. The whole carcass of a crocodile is poisonous, mm. but the tail is not. I need the tail. Mm. Is that person hungry? This is the same thing here. Eve was not hungry. She had had food. She had been eating food, but she sees that this tree is desirable to make one wise. Yo. Mm. That's, that's the conclusion we also make. Remember, I was telling others before we came. I came here, that when you are angry, you have made a choice to be angry. Mm-hmm. Because there is no one under the sun who has capacity to make you angry. They can activate anger that is already existing in you. Mm -hmm. But they can't make you angry. When you make you get angry, you have chosen that this cannot continue like this. Mm -hmm. I need to stand up like someone. Mm -hmm. I need to make my way, I'm, my voice to be heard. I cannot be looked down upon like this. You you make a choice to react in anger. Mm. Listen here. What I see is not the ultimate. What I see is if eventually ate, the devil used the hair. Mm to destroy yourself. Look at it. When somebody is committing suicide, it is not the devil committing suicide. It is the person possessed of the spirit of the evil one that takes the rope and hangs themselves. So this is the temptation. This is the fall she chose. Mm -hmm. Adam went out of love. Eve chose to bring the whole generation to where she is. And she successfully did so. Why? She was equipped. She came from God. The spirit of God was in her. But she looked at thing after hearing from a thief, from a creature, not from the creator or his spouse or his her husband, no, but from a creature. She says, what happened? Verse 7. Let's read verse 7. After they ate, she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate feather reading. Oh, there's somebody with the feather reading in great controversy. Thank you. You can edify us. I want to pray now. I want us to sleep with this. Let us look at this thoroughly when we go to the next Wednesday. Let us thoroughly look at this. Then the eyes of both of them were open. Now, what's happening here? That yeah. eye. Yeah. What that eye <laughs> and this eye 
and they yes. knew that they were naked. Uh -huh. So when they ate, Adam ate, they, they, their eyes saw. Which, which are the eyes that now see? Exactly. exactly. Which one I see? And they knew. No, that that's the word. Naked. That's the word, elder. That's the word. The word knew. That's the mm. eye. That's the eye. That's yeah. the spirit. Yes. Yes. Which eye is this one? Now you can you can go along with me. Mm -hmm. The eye that was there, that is there in verse six. Yeah. It's not the eye of Eve. No. No. So 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 here it is. Um let me share with you my reading from another uh spirit of prophecy devotional called to be like Jesus. Mm. Commenting on those verses. The enemy actually said your eyes shall be opened. Yeah. <laughs> this statement <laughs> of eyes started with Satan saying, your eyes shall be opened. That's verse 5, isn't it? For God knows that the day when you eat huh, your eyes, of it, will, your be eyes will be opened. So was the devil right? You will be like God. <laughs> right. So, so the deception was on the last part. You will be like God because they were already like God. They were created in the mm. likeness of God. But when he says your <laughs> eyes shall be opened, verse 7, it says, and their eyes were both opened. All right. Mm. So their eyes were indeed what? opened. This is what now the spirit of prophecy says. Their eyes were indeed opened. But how mm. said the opening? Because that opening was the knowledge of evil. They, they now discovered the curse of the sin. Mm, they saw that, nakedness sin. That is all the transgressors gain. There was nothing poisonous in the fruit itself. And the sin was not merely in yielding to appetite. Sin was a distrust of God's goodness, a disbelief of his word, a rejection Amen. of his authority that made and our live, first... And the living, desiring to live yes. against the destruction yes. of God. Yes, and that brought the world into a knowledge of evil. It was this that opened the door to every species of falsehood and error. So mm. men and women lost all because they chose to listen to the deceiver rather than to him who is truth, who alone has understanding. By mingling evil with good, their minds mm. became confused their mental and spiritual powers were benumbed. No longer could they appreciate the good that God had freely bestowed. My elder. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This part here, mm. we need we need to trade uh, yeah. effectively and we need to see Many things here. Yeah. The eyes of them both were both opened. opened. And they knew that they were naked. Mm. Can you see that they saw nakedness? The first which goal. They, the elder, did, that that word naked if you underline it now and you trace it throughout the bible you mm. discover that most sins that are committed <laughs> later are directly related to the state naked. of the dressing the it's state naked. of the covering yes right naked. up right right up to revelation it's naked god is still saying 
put on something so that the world does not need on see your nakedness god's business yeah. has always nakedness. been to cover our nakedness yes yes sin is nakedness yeah and nakedness is sin mm. so in the absence of the eyes of the spirit of god they see sin <coughs> mm. they see nothing but sin yeah they see the evidence they of the presence of sin in them mm. they saw sin in them we, we do we, maybe there are people who have never sinned here but people who have sinned they know no elder let's be, let's speak openly we all have sinned here men and women for men it's even worse because our we are we are visual creatures that's <laughs> why that's why the biggest temptation that we are dealing with right now is what we call the skin tight gospel the skin tight gospel the devil wants to put clothes on people that will reveal every curve and every groove and every bump on their bodies mm. that's nakedness because that's dressing big. is for covering not for revealing mm. So the issue of fashion and dressing is not a small matter because the first evidence that Adam and Eve had sinned was the revealing of their bodies. Hey. And right hey. up to the end of the gospel, Jesus wants to give us a new cloth, a new garment, and he makes it white, same fashion, same pattern, male and female the issue of dressing is a big issue even with god at the spiritual level elder it is it is our character at a physical level it is our dressing our dressing is an index of the spirit mm. these two are and, connected and also, and, and also elder no, no, not not this one before they saw naked Mm -hmm. Where they dress, what does the Bible say? Ah, good point. They <laughs> naked, yeah, and not ashamed. Shamed, yeah, yes. Which tells me that they were covered. Mm -hmm. And when sin struck through it. And Adam completed the second. Hmm. The eyes open. Yes. They yes. saw nakedness. It tells me that Ichabod had taken place. Mm -hmm. They were covered by God's glory. Mm -hmm. And when they ate the fruit, the covering, which is God's glory, mm -hmm. departed. Mm -hmm. And they saw themselves for who they are. Mm. And they ran to the fig tree to replace the departed girl. Listen, listen very close. Mm. The departed glory of God replaced by the fig leaves. Mm. Fig leaves is what man has seen and fabricated for his covering. But the glory of God is what God has given. Mm. So now, in the absence of God's glory, they see their nakedness and they get afraid and they want to cover that nakedness which is now seen mm. and they want to, to look all right to god and when they are covered with fig leaves they still find that they are not fully dressed mm. and they find bushes in the garden to hide from the presence of god I don't know if you are seeing it. Listen here. 
sin is more spiritual. It uses our limbs mm -hmm. to fulfill or to, to give the fruit of what it is mm -hmm. inside of us. When you are a murderer, it begins inside in your spirit. Then when it is fully grown, you kill someone. Mm -hmm. When you are a, a promiscuous inside and you are married, you will start by having good reason mm. for action that you are taking. Mm. It's because you are receiving messages from the serpent. Mm. I do not know if we can see it. We need to pray now. Listen, mm. you need to be covered by God's glory before you walk into a dressing shop or into a clothing shop. If you walk into a clothing shop and not spiritually oriented in God, you will cover your body with sinfulness. You can't mm. hear me. Mm. You can hear this one. Mm. If you walk into the clothing shop yeah. without the spirit of God covering you, you will cover your body with sinfulness. And people will see nakedness in your dressed up body. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I don't know if this is coming in properly. Listen here. We don't need to live without the spirit of God. The tempter will come. Let me read you another verse quickly. Then we can pray. Let me read you another verse. Mm. Then we can pray. I think it's First Corinthians 10 verse 13. First Corinthians 10 verse 13, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Can you try there, Sister, Sister Phyllis? Can you please try there if you if you can see something there? Verse. I think it's verse 18. I'm not sure now. My verses are running away from me. But read That's there. It. Read there. Yeah. There you go. No temptation is <laughs> overtaking you except such as is common to men. Mm -hmm. But God is faithful. Mm -hmm. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Mm. But with the Temptation will also make the way of escape. Mm. That mm. you may be able to bear it. Mm. It tells me here that when Eve was being tempted, the temptation was not wrong. Mm -hmm. The temptation always has its place in our lives. But to fall into temptation is what is a big problem. Why do we fall into temptation? Can you read the First Thessalonians, uh, First Thessalonians 3 verse 5? Verse 5. Says, for this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you mm. and our labor might be in vain. In vain. Mm. Powerful. That's a powerful statement. Mm. When you get tempted, 
and he gets through to you. Even the laborers in the vineyard of the Lord will find nothing. We'll find nothing. Why? Yeah. Hmm. We'll find nothing. Let me read another verse quickly. Second Corinthians 11, verse 3. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from this from the simplicity. Hmm. That is in Christ. Hmm. If, listen, temptation will always come. Hmm. You will not be a valid Christian if you don't get tempted. Hmm. You will not be a valid Christian. There is no pure gold that is never passed through high temperature. Hmm. So, in, in, in conclusion of today, personally, I am saying Eve chose, voluntarily walked into the space where we are today. Adam ate out of love and the, the circuit was completed and mm -hmm. they saw nakedness. And when they saw nakedness, they rushed to the fig tree and the fig tree re re or replaced the former covering which I feel and see it got glory mm -hmm. that was covering them. So the means of man to keep covered becomes the fig leaf which is today self-righteousness. Mm. Do you know when someone is lying, they are trying to cover a sin. Mm -hmm. When you do a sin and you you need to be a good person, <laughs> mm. you have to lie to be a good person. Yeah. You have sometimes to dress like a good person. You have to speak like a good person. You have to put on a necktie like mm. a good person. Sometimes you have to preach the gospel like a good person when you are really self-righteous. Mm. We need to see that this temptation started with Eve. It's not over. Jesus was tempted the same mm. way Mm. The wilderness. What did it if you look at the temptation of Eve and the, the temptation of Jesus, you will see the same vein, same thread. Mm. It may not be exactly the same, but temptation over food was there. Mm. But on Jesus' side, he was hungry. Mm. He was hungry. But on Eve, she was not. My elder, yes, sir. I don't know with this this gospel for tonight. Mm. How can God rescue us? Do you see that we now don't need any fig tree mm -hmm. leaves? Mm -hmm. We don't need fig tree leaves now. Mm. We need the reality, the yeah. truth, the truth. Mm. We need to deal with the source of sin and the power of sin. Mm. The source of sin is the adversary of Christ. Mm. And the power of sin mm. is mm. the spirit of that person. Mm. And that needs to be dealt with. But who can deal with that today here? Who can deal with it? Nobody. Only Christ. Mm. No wonder why. We end up with John 15 and John 14. Mm. I will not leave you alone. I will not leave you comfortless. Mm. The world will not see me, but you see me. Because I live, you will also live. Listen here. Our life is dependent on the existence and presence of God's glory in mm -hmm. our lives. Amen. In the absence of God's glory, 
listen to me, go to church fast as much as you can. Pray, come to the platform many times. No victory. No victory. You know, mm-hmm. Elder, as we pray tonight, mm. I want to warn somebody who thinks that by living a morally correct life, they will go to heaven. No. The devil has no problem with you living a morally clean life without the authority of Christ in your life. What he hates is not good morals. There are many people who don't know God out there today who are living a morally pure life and are eating veganism as a vegan. All right? They are giving alms and helping a lot of people. They are morally right. They actually don't like sin in in one way or another, but in their lives, they don't have Christ. The greatest deception today that Satan has refined into the church is that you can be compliant to a checklist of morals, but not be compliant to the full restoration that is in Jesus Christ. That is our greatest danger today, to think that when we return tithe, when we keep the Sabbath, when we don't lie, when we don't, and we keep a checklist of our rights and our, we, we, we will not enter heaven by being morally right. We will enter when we are covered and hidden in Christ the Adam yeah. who got covered by that skin of a lamb was a sinful Adam. The people who survived the slaughtering angel in Egypt were not necessarily holy people, but they were found under the blood-stained door. That was, that's what saved them. They were not saved because they were pure. They were saved because they had Jesus in their lives. I guess tonight, Elder, in full recognition of the deception we are living under and our failure to keep God's word, we need something bigger and higher than ourselves to save us. And that's what the plan of salvation is about. That's what Jesus is. And that's what Paul is talking about. The simplicity that is in Jesus Christ is what we need today. It's not about counting that because many of us do a checklist. I've never committed adultery. I was pure when I got married. Then what? Because that doesn't save you. As much as that is a good thing, it does not save you. What saves you is that you know Christ and Christ knows you. Because when Christ cleanses you, you live in the freedom of the Son of God. Not in the pharisaical religion that we often as subscribe to. We, I'm almost at the risk of saying I've never had baptismal vows in the Bible. The only vow I had was, if you believe in Jesus Christ, thou can be saved. Yeah. The That's rest, true, the rest, elder, we are complicating the simplicity of the salvation. So today I want to tell someone out there who's listening to me. You may feel like you don't deserve to be saved because you sinned, you committed a sin. Some of you are living with your wives when actually your marriage vows were long broken because you broke those vows a long time ago. There's no there's no longer purity in your marriage. Some of you are still calling yourselves Christians, but you know. Deep in your heart, you are not converted. I want you not to go away beating your chest tonight. I want you to know that God came to a sinful Adam, a sinful Eve, and he still covered them. He asked Adam, where are you? God came chasing after them. God today is chasing after you and saying, I don't care what you've done. Adam, I don't care. But can we start this thing all over again? Because I have a plan of getting you out of this quagmire. I have a plan of delivering you. Tonight, Jesus is simply saying, don't get that simplicity of Christ, of just believing and giving yourself to God and saying, in Christ, I am complete. In Christ, I am delivered. In Christ, I am covered. In Christ, I am free from the chains and the law 
of sin, even when I sin, Christ is able to cleanse me. I'm not saying I'm going to continue willfully sinning, but I am just leaning and learning to lean on Christ. Amen. You are like a baby who says, I don't know how to walk, but Christ is teaching me how to walk afresh. And so tonight, I guess the call elder is, would you be free from the burden and the chains of your sin? Mm. There is power in, in, in the blood. In, in that, when we fall yeah. into temptation, it is because the Spirit of Christ is not in us. Yes, we leave him. In the absence of the Spirit of Christ, you cannot stand mm -hmm. as a Christian. No. The storms that come will sweep you away because you are not on the rock. Mm -hmm. You are on the same. This all amounts to the why we are learning today of the fall is that the adventure we can get the knowledge of how Adam and Eve fell and mm. we be able to stand. Christ stood in the wilderness. He was tempted the same way by the same tempter, but he overcame Yeah, for you and for me. Amen. I want to pray with you tonight. Amen. Would the... you be free Yes. To give your heart fully. Yeah. To Jesus and say, please, God, temptation will come. But I don't care about temptation. I just care about your presence. Mm. If you are not in me, I will not be able to stay. Yes. Because I'm not standing even now. If you are absent, you can only stand when he is present. That's why Paul is writing 17, Acts 17, I think it's verse 28, in him we walk and we have yes, our yes. being. Without mm, Christ, it's mm. impossible to stand temptation. There's someone here, Elder, who is covering their fallen state with fig trees or fig leaves. Ellen White mm. says, the nakedness of a sinner cannot be covered by the arguments we put together mm. and the flimsy work that we put in to try and cover up. There are some people who are gospel workers today, who are church members today. Those are fig leaves. You are covering up your wickedness, but you are actually a witch who comes to church. You are a demoniac who comes and hides in church. She also says that uh, the robes of ignorance, because Adam and Eve covered that which was physical, but could not cover that which was spiritual inside of them. Mm. So she says, yeah. we cannot depend on the robes of ignorance. We need to ask God to take over the seat of sin which is in us. And that's the call we have for tonight. I think it's time for us to pray and close this meeting. Yeah. You can lead Amen. us, Elder. I would need um, two people that offer to pray for us, seeing the gravity of oh, our lesson tonight. We are still going through the same. We are still there. We need him to protect us. I need two people who say I will speak loud, but all of us are praying where we are. All of us. We are praying all of us where we are. But two will be supported by our prayers in agreement to what we are asking God to do. God has promised whatever you agree to ask, it shall be done. Of my father. What are we asking? My request would be let your spirit indwell us. On Sabbath, we spoke of indwelling in death. We need the indwelling of the spirit of God. 
And I would ask that tonight. The two people who will pray, ask God to give us his Holy Spirit as promised in John 14. To indwell us. Raise your hand. Quick. Two. Only two slots. Two. Are you still there? Thank you, Elmo Jim. Thank you, Clarice. The two of you, please cry to God for us. We need your spirit to indwell us. Let's pray. Let us pray. My faith look up to the Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. No one mm. hear me while I pray. Take all my fears away. Oh, let me not from this tray. From this day, Lord, help me to be holy time. Father God, come by me for your throne of grace. As I sat here and I listened to your words, I felt fear. I am not feeling the fear of condemnation. But knowing that I am sitting in the presence of God and I felt the fear of my God around me. Lord, I don't know about my brothers and my sisters who are sitting here this evening, this afternoon, this night. We are here, O oh God, and asking you to help us to build up our faith in you. And ask you, O Lord, to remove the filthy rags of sin from our lives as we confess our sins before you. Let us not run away and hide. Let us not come to you in fear, being afraid, but in fear and trembling, knowing that your grace and your mercy is great towards us. Amen. Heavenly Father, there is none like you. You have made a provision because you know the hearts of men. You know that our parents would fall and they had fallen. And we also are falling because we are disobedient. Great God and our King, we ask you this day to grant unto us another portion of your blessing, your grace and your mercy, because even though we don't deserve it, Lord, you have given it unto us. Mm. Oh, Lord, hear my humble cry. Pass us not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear, O oh humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me, do not pass us by God. Mm. We are living in the time when we need to call upon you more. So help us, Lord. Cleanse us. Cover us with your righteousness. Because our righteousness are like filter rags. Lord, remove the filter rags from us. And clothe us like you clothed John. When you said to the him, the angel, remove his filter rags and cover him with my righteousness. Cover us with your righteousness, Father God. Please, God, cover us. Cover us today. We need you, Jesus. We're living in the time of the end. And many things are happening around us. Some of us are so blind, we are not seeing, even mm. though we are seeing. So open our eyes like the eyes of the servant of Elijah and let us see God, that we are living in perilous times and that we should take up our dressing, take up our spots and be who he wants us to be. Mm. Let us arm ourselves, God. And help us to not only speak the word, but to live the words, Lord, and act upon the word. Mm. Help us today, God, and have mercy upon us. Mm. And help us as we 
pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Say amen. 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 Thank you. Clarice, all over to you. Father who art in heaven, Father, we want to thank you for the privilege of prayer. We want to thank you, dear Father, for the gift of the teachings that you give us. Your word that is new every day when we hear it. Dear Father, as we come before your throne of grace this evening, this morning, this afternoon, we are filled with so much fear after having heard your word. We take your word for granted, dear Father, many a times. And we allow ourselves to be lured into the territory of the evil one, dear Father thinking that we can get ourselves out of the situations that many a times we find ourselves getting into. Mm. Teach us, dear Lord, to be obedient to your word. Father, without you, we find ourselves falling. We find ourselves inclining more into the territory of the evil one. Mm. Father, may you be with us. May you order our footsteps, dear Lord. May you guide us unto the way of righteousness, dear Father. For if you leave us, dear Lord, we shall perish. Mm. Dear Lord, this evening, as we have heard your word, May we not take it for granted that it becomes a routine thing that we hear you on a daily basis and nothing is changed within us. Mm. Having heard you, dear Father, may it be that like Moses, when we leave this place, our faces will be shining such that people will know that we have been with you. Amen. Change our ways, change our lifestyles. May we have a closer walk with you, hear you, and see you in our lives, dear Father. Mm. We cannot speak of you, dear Lord, when we do not know you. Amen. We need to know you, dear Father, so that we can proclaim your goodness to others who do not know you, dear Lord. Mm. We have become so complacent, dear Father, and we tell ourselves we know it all. Mm. But Father, we see that we do not know you. Just like Eve, she thought she had everything in her control, but she didn't have it in her control. Help us, dear mm. Father, we need you this evening, this morning, this afternoon. Mm. May we walk with you. Guide us, dear Father, in everything that we do in our lives. Mm. For without you, dear Father, we are just but empty vessels. Mm. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, dear Father. We are asking, dear Lord, that as we come before your throne of grace, we do not take this word for granted. Mm. But may it be life in our lives. And may it change us, dear Lord. Thank you for everyone who is on this platform, dear Father. Grant them their wishes. And thank you for the elders that are guiding us in the teachings. May you also remember them and their families. We thank you, dear Lord, for loving us, for alerting us to the danger that is now here in the end times, dear Father. Open our eyes, dear Father, and may we hear you when you speak to us so that we can shun all forms of evil, dear Lord. We thank you for your word that conscientizes us every day to move in your way of righteousness. We pray all this in the wonderful name of your Son, our soon coming Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.
our Father, our God in heaven and here on earth. Mm -hmm. We are so grateful, so thankful that you reveal such mysteries of the power of your way in human life mm -hmm. to useless people like us. I'm so grateful and thankful. May your name be glorified. May you be honored. Give us the strength to embrace you. Give us the power to keep focused on you. Do not allow us to count temptation as anything, but allow us to walk along with you. Hold us by hand and practically walk on the path of righteousness that leads to your presence. Mm -hmm. We need your Holy Spirit to live for you, to speak for you, to do things that reveal, that become an expression of your glory to the world around us. We cannot do anything without you. What we are asking tonight, we cannot get it from anyone. We cannot get this from any place. There is no university that can give us your character, your spirit. It's only you who can. There is no church. There is no system we, we, we can consult to get your Holy Spirit. It's only you who can give us. If you don't give us your Holy Spirit, we will not have your Holy Spirit. To my understanding, he was given, but he has not operated with us, through us, in us. I pray that the Holy Spirit may operate with us, in us, and for us. May he lead us. May he groan from within us before the throne of grace. And so we can be blessed by your, his presence. You promised. You said without me you can do nothing. You promised. That I will not leave you alone. You said you will come to us. Please God. If it is not today. So when will it be? Will you please come in our life? and walk and speak through us and, and, and see through us. Let our eyes see your existence, your presence, your power, your glory, your deep grace. May this be our experience on moment-by-moment -moment basis because we are in danger in your absence. It's only when you are present. Bless every soul that is here. And bless everyone that knows someone that is here tonight. May the downstream benefits of the extension and existence of your spirit be our experience on this platform. So that after all, you can be worshipped and be glorified in our hearts as it is in heaven. May even the churches where we worship have a feel of your great glory and your power. Because we are here asking for your presence in our lives. I pray, my heavenly Father, that we may be safe. We may be protected from falling. I know in the past we did wrong things, but you erased them because you kept us alive. Just for this day. So that we can experience your spirit operating from within us. I thank you. You know what we lack. You know what we need to continue to function for you. You know how we should go. You know what we should touch. You know everything. We know nothing. We see, but we don't see. We hear, but we don't hear. But you know what we don't know. And for that, I ask in the name of Jesus that you do it for us. I know in your, in your presence, no disease will overcome us. No fear will defeat us. We will overcome because you are overcome. You overcame the world. 
So come and stay in us, as you said in John 14. Come and stay in us. Come and live in us tonight. Don't leave us alone. Thank you, because you have done it in the name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. And amen. 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 Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us tonight. We apologize for taking a little bit longer, but I hope it was worth it. God bless you. And uh, go and seek for your master. Study his yeah. word and lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will guide you. God loves you with an Amen. everlasting love, a Amen. love that will not be withheld when you come. Amen. Don't stay in your hall and cry and mourn. Come to Jesus. There is a way for you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Elder Mangena. Thank you to thank Sister you. Phyllis, and thank you to all those who participated in the prayer with your requests and your prayers. May the Lord bless you. I invite you to our meeting tomorrow night at 8 p.m. with the book club. Uh, I think we're doing chapter 15, Sister Elmo Jean, if I'm right. Yes, Elder. Chapter 15 of the book, Desire of Ages. Join us tomorrow for an in-depth study. You will be glad you joined for your spiritual growth and nourishment. And again, I want to invite you on Saturday night, 8 p.m., we are into the most holy place as we continue with our weekly prayer meetings. The Lord hears our prayers. You want to be in that group. You want to be in that meeting and don't miss out. Thank you very much and God bless you. See you tomorrow night. Bye-bye. God bless you too, Elder. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless. Mm -hmm.